this code is Shadow Dogs the Bomb, but built for theme park news. And welcome to a next five years video where today we'll be looking at Lightwater Valley in Ripon, North Yorkshire. Now, a special shout out goes to Liam Barry, David Ledbetter, and Alfie Gascoigne for this video suggestion. If you've got any video suggestions, please comment them down below. And also, please like the video. Comment down below your thoughts and your predictions for Lightwater Valley. Please subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, and on social media. And make sure you keep getting your questions in using the hashtag question before or after your question in the comments down below for our Q&A subscriber session. Uh, that's our Q&A to celebrate 2,000 subscribers when we hit that milestone. Uh, we're on the way, you know, we're in the 1,600, so we're, we're approaching 1,700, I'm sure, very, very soon. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer to 2,000 subs. And for now, guys, let's get into another video. So before we take a look at the last five, at the next five years, we have to take a look back at the last 10 years is the last decade of Lightwater Valley. So for the 2010 season, Lightwater Valley decided to refurbish the rat ride into Raptor Attack and bring in a brand new dinosaur theme to the park with animatronic dinosaurs and the same rat ride entrance into the park. Now as well as this, they also brought in Whirlwind, which is a Hus Top Scan attraction, similar to Samurai at Thorpe Park. Now, also in 2010, the park decided decided to close the wave attraction uh, which was an old uh, pirate ship uh, and that was removed that was sold and sold and sorted in the UK and stored um, and as well as that in 2010 the veteran cars were removed after operating in the 80s they were relocated to needles landmark attraction they also closed the original Whirlwind, because of course that was on like a one year lease, and then they introduced a brand new contract for a few years. Um, so they also brought in the new contract for that ride. Um, and also the go-karts were scrapped, so that was manufactured by Formula K, uh, so that attraction was scrapped at the park as well. Now in 2011, the park decided to open some many new attractions from the Loudoun Castle theme park in Scotland, and that was to create Skeleton Coast. So where the uh, old pirate ship the wave was uh, and around that surrounding area that is where Skeleton Cove was created and they brought in rides such as Black Pearl which is a Weber Ranger attraction uh, they also brought in a brand new Hus pirate ship called Flying Cutlass they also brought in Powder Kegs which is a Hus Breakdance a Zampella Sea Storm attraction called Skull Rock uh, and as well as that in the 2011 season um, you know that was that was the main thing that was the main thing there was no real other attractions that was the main investment for the 2011 season now in terms of 2012 in 2012 there was no real new attractions however in 2013 quite a little bit happened so in 2013 they scrapped the dodgems uh, but also in 2013 they introduced Eagles Creek Tractor Ride which was manufactured by Metal Bow Emlyn uh, and this was part of a brand new themed area called Eagles Creek Farm and Eagles Creek Farm to be fair I've seen it in action I was there in 2016 for my last uh, for my latest visit to like Water Valley uh, not my last one of course uh, but it was my latest visit and to be fair it wasn't that bad to be fair so nothing came out of 2014 in that season, however in 2015 they decided to close the Whirlwind uh, for the final time. Uh, there, was, there would be a replacement in 2016, which I'll get onto in a little bit. Uh, now also in 2015 they introduced the Vintage, ca uh, the vintage Rat Car Rally, which is of course again Metal Bout Emlyn coming in uh, to manufacture the ride. Now in 2016 the park decided to open Apollo, which is a Star Flyer. Uh, uh, attraction uh, and then of course they also decided to remove the flying camels attraction now that was a children's ride uh, the light water wheel was also removed that was relocated to Bayside Fun Park um, and then in 2017 in 2017 the park decided to open flying Nellies for one season then that was relocated to Primrose Holiday Park also in 2017 the closure of their 2001 Huss Enterprise Black uh, Black uh, Black Widow's Web. Uh, then, of course, uh, in 2018, uh, there was no new attractions. However, however, there was closures in 2019, and that was the closure of, according to Coastopedia, Apollo. Now, there's been loads of talk about Apollo and what the future is for that attraction, and there's talk at the minute that that attraction has, in fact, closed, and that is set to be 
uh, removed from the park. And there was talk on social media over the last couple of weeks whether uh, Apollo would be going. So I'm not going to confirm it at this stage. Uh, however, what I will say is um, it looks like it's definitely going to be removed. So... That, my friends, is the last 10 years of Lightwater Valley. So a very, very interesting last 10 years. So obviously a lot of closures. There's a few openings in there, but a lot of closures. Obviously one big closure that I forgot about towards the end of the decade was, of course, the Twister after the accident. I didn't want to mention the Twister because of the accident, but you know what I mean. We know the Twister closed, um, and that site has become available as well. Uh, so very interesting there. Now, if you didn't see it on Twitter, a park, according to Coastal Touring on Twitter about a week ago now, or nearly a week ago, apparently a UK park was up for sale, and it was up for sale until uh, the day after he posted it, um, that, in con that contained about 30 rising attractions, that was the, the park up for sale. Loads of talk about Oakwood, Drake Manor, uh, there was even a couple of rumours suggesting like Water Valley could be in another act. I know it's not 30 rising attractions exactly, but you know, how it can be an estimate and things like that. Uh, so they could potentially have like Water Valley being bought. Now of course with the accident and obviously Livingstone Ledge is wanting to uh, sell off. Maybe like Water Valley could be in the equation. So these next five year predictions are based off if the park gets bought. Now of course I, I didn't, I haven't done a separate video on this yet. I may do it. Comment down below if you want to see a separate video on this. But basically the rumoured buyer, according to forums, is either the Looping Group, based in France, or Parque Renuidos, based in Spain. Of course, the Looping Group own Pleasurewood Hills. They've been in the UK before, so they know about the UK market. Uh, they also own a couple of other parks like Bagatelle and Murder Sable in France, um, as well as some other parks around the rest of Europe. Parque Renuidos, based in Spain, they... Um, you know, own a few parks, they own parks such as Movie Park Germany, uh, in Germany, uh, among other parks as well. Of course, Kennywood over in the States, they're their US park owned by them, so, you know. Park Kevin Uridos has been given criticism for not investing, however, with the investments they have made, you know, they have been well-themed additions, so I think that, and you look at the stuff that's happening with the recent parts, you look at it with the Looping Group, you look at Murder Sable, and you look at how, what they're doing with their Silver Mountain Coaster coming in 2021, I think that if Lightwater Valley is the park up for sale, and they buy Lightwater Valley, I think there's real potential that either one of those could invest in Lightwater Valley, so... I'm thinking like those two groups, I'm thinking of both those groups with predictions for future attractions. So these next five years are to do with if Light Water Valley is the UK part rumoured to be up for sale and bought by either the Looping Group or Parque Renuidos or any other company. So let's start off with 2021. And 2021 is a very easy one. I think there's going to be no investment. I think it's going to be very minimal investment and just loads and loads of changes. Um, I think that is purely because of the crisis. I think that uh, these smaller parks like the Light Waters and things like that, you know, they're going to be more affected than the bigger parks. So, uh, even though the bigger parks have been going through the ringer, so, uh, you, you know, they're having to push back investments. So, I think that Light Water Valley is no exception. I think they're going to uh, hold off from investment. But 2022, I think they're going to invest in a brand new family ride or a thrill ride. Now, what you've got on your screen, uh, by the way, I hope you love the, the new 3D style writing for the years that I'm predicting. Uh, uh, but you look behind you, that my friends is the Ladybird Coaster. Now this is where I believe the lightning wheel, uh, light, light water wheel was, uh, or it might have been further up, I'm not too sure. Uh, but it's around about that area where lightning, uh, light water wheel once was. It's around about that area, so it may be the exact area, or it may be very, very near to that area. Uh, but I could see... A Zamperla Disco Coaster. Now, it could be just a normal curve one. It could be one with an airtime hill like Edge at Portland's Park or Cobra at Chessington. One of those, you know, types of disco coasters. Uh, and I think that's a good attraction for the park because I think that it's a... It's a uh, a good thrill ride. It's exactly what the part would need. Uh, it's not a coaster. It's not a coaster. It's a flat ride. It's not a coaster. Uh, <laughs> um... So they could do it with the same, you know, discus style as Edge and Cobra. Or they could go with like the pipe scream at Cedar Point style, where they go with the the long rectangular uh, train. Uh, however, I think my best guess is probably the disc. Um, and they could do some really nice uh, themes with it. Uh, they can do some nice designs with it. I think they could do some nice, you know, things with it. Uh, so I think that a disco coaster would be the best solution in this case. 
Moving in then to Toy 23, and I'm, you can see on your screen the Adventure Playground, and I think that'll be the site for another new flat ride. Now, this would be a new flat ride for the Pirate Area for Skeleton Cove, uh, and I would like to see, now this may be a long shot, but I think if they can expand the site behind and, you know, um, eliminate that path, that, that path behind the playground, uh, so that becomes a non-entrance path, um, and just block, and you know remove that path, and if they can expand it back a bit more, I'd like to see a Zamperla Water Mania, or if failing that, if it's just the playground site in itself, a Mac Twist and Splash like Tsunami Soaker at the Six Flags Parks, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, Bikini Bottom Bash. Um, yeah, that kind of attraction, that sort of uh, twisty, splashy attraction uh, in the Nickelodeon land at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, that, my friends, is a very good attraction, by the way. If you haven't tried it, uh, I would really recommend it because, uh, well, well, obviously when the park's open, obviously we know the Blackpool Pleasure Beach is scheduled to open by uh, July the 4th, uh, or planning to, hopefully. And, um, you know, I think that attraction is definitely a what one to look for, uh, the Spongebob Splash Bash. Um, I don't know why I called it the Bikini Bottom Bash earlier. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the Spongebob Splash Bash, something like that, a light water value would work very, very well. Theme it around nature, you look at what, uh, you look at the Wild World Grove at Dollywood uh, over in the States, you look at the theming for that and you look at the theming for their kids' ride. You know, if they could do like a, a nature wood theme, with that, uh, like a like a woodland splash battle, um, that would be very very nice. So I think either go the sp splash bash route with the twist and splash by Matt Wright, or if you can expand the land and remove that path behind, do a splash battle. Do a nice splash battle like a battle galleons or uh, like a small a, a much much smaller scale of Angor at Port Aventura. Obviously that's Europe's longest splash battle. Uh, so I think that a smaller scale version of that would be nice. Uh, so uh, that would be pretty cool indeed. Moving in then to 2024, and 2024 you can see a massive site right there. Now this, in my opinion, could be a site for a coaster. Now I've got two sites of coasters, one for 2024 and one for 2025. Now obviously you can't see the other site on your screen at the minute, but I'm going to put that on your screen in a little bit. But for 2024, if this is the coaster year, I'm predicting, now if, Now this is where the, the companies come in, if Flight Water Valley is purchased by the Looping Group, I think they're going to get Triops from Bagatelle, owned by the same group, and I think Triops will come to Light Water Valley as a brand new coaster, and I think they're going to open it at Light Water Valley, this, uh, this, you know, inverted boomerang by Vacoma. Now, if that's not the case, I could very well see a Gerstler Eurofighter. Now it won't be a custom. It, it, it could be a custom model, actually. And you look at Vatika at Lorecre. That only cost five million euros. Uh, so I think that uh, with some investment backing, I think that Light Water Valley could purchase a Eurofighter. Uh, now, obviously, like I said, the Triops thing is only dependent on the Looping Group, and it's only dependent on what they do. Uh, so. You know, if the Looping Group are the buyers and they're going to buy Light Water Valley, if that's the park up for sale, then I think Triops could go. I think that obviously we've been talking over the last couple of years and we've talked about on a separate update on that on the Bagatelle Park how Triops was up for sale and then maybe it wasn't. It was rumored to be up for sale, then it wasn't. Maybe Triops could go to Light Water Valley or maybe it'll stay. Uh, so I think if the Looping Group are the buyer and Light Water Valley are being bought by someone else or they're staying as they are and they get like an extra investment fund to help them out. Um, then Triops will stay and they'll get the Ghost Eye Eurofighter. I think if Triops is still up for sale or could be back up for sale at some point in the future after Looping's group announced if they bought Lightwater Valley or not, I think they could bring in Triops to Lightwater Valley and then replace that at Bagatelle with a different coaster. Now moving into 2025, now 2024 could be a small investment year instead and then 2025 becomes the coaster year. Now what you're seeing here is the site of Apollo. Now apparently that has been sold, uh, so uh, apparently that's gone from the park, so that site is completely free. 
hopefully for, for a replacement very very soon um you see the skate carts obviously that closed a couple of years ago because of health and safety restrictions and you also see a former maze site now they could include the twister site as well so that's included and um yeah this site could be home to again either a ghost like you're a fighter or i'm gonna be very very ambitious about this a single rail coaster now I'm being very very ambitious about this and the reason I'm being very ambitious about this um, you know idea is because I've heard that Railblazer wasn't that much it wasn't that much in terms of money it was only a couple million uh, US dollars which would translate to a couple million pounds um, or a few million pounds uh, or as we call it in the Britain, a few million quid. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think that single rail is a very broad idea. I think it probably won't happen. Uh, but I think with the rumoured cost of Railblazer, I think that a clone of that, or maybe even a custom model, but slightly shorter, would even be alright. Uh, and I think it would be that big draw attraction to... Uh, to bring the crowds back to the park. I think that would be the way forward in my opinion. So, I think that... Uh, Lightwater Valley, in my opinion, do have a bright future, and I'm being very broad about my predictions here. But, you know, most of these won't even happen, in my opinion. But, I'm being very open-minded and optimistic about my predictions. I think Lightwater Valley does have a long-term future at the park, in, in the UK theme park community. But, it's just a case of someone willing to take a chance on them. And I think they deserve a chance, because when I went in 2016, yes, the Ultimate banged my knees together and created bruises, but... Hell, it was still a fantastic day. Apollo was a great ride. I never got the chance to experience Raptor Attack yet, so I want to go back to that one at some point and try that out. Um, and try out that uh, Raptor Attack, because uh, it wasn't open by the time uh, we visited. Um, never got the chance to do Skate Carts. Twister, again. Shame I didn't get to do that on the day. Um, you know, there was other attractions that I got to do. Uh, that are still there. Other attractions that I haven't got to do which are still there, so I still need to go back. Um, and I think the whole... I think this decade, and going into next decade, if someone takes a chance on them, will be a chance to rebuild the park and bring back the glory days and bring back the glory years of Light Water Valley. So, I really want someone to take a chance on Light Water, whether it's the Looping Group, whether it's Parque Renuidos, whether it's someone else. I want someone to take a chance on Light Water Valley. So thank you very much guys for watching this theme park next five years video from Lightwater Valley. Again, big shout out to Liam Barry, David Ledbetter, and Alfie Gasco for shouting out this video. If you've got video suggestions, whether it's next five years, any news updates that you see, comment them down below. And um, yeah, I'll be able to save those video ideas down. I've got a heck of a lot to film. I've got stuff for the second channel, which is football and basketball. I've separated the two channels again. Uh, so I think it's very... It's, it's, it's easier, it's easier, it's easier to keep the big stuff on here and then the second channel of football and basketball, we grow that and keep growing that second channel as well. Uh, so it's, it's great separating the two channels and keeping them separate. So uh, go and check out that channel as well, I'll leave a link in the description down below from this video onwards uh, for the second channel. And for now guys, please like, comment, subscribe, and for now guys, my name is Coach Shell YouTube channel, keep living the coast alive. I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.